the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions will say. Their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y... Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Anyone who knows the great Gildersleeve knows that whenever a difficult situation presents itself, he can be counted upon for the right solution. So last week, when he found a six-month-old baby in his car, he didn't hesitate one minute to say, Wow, I better call my lawyer. Judge Hooker advised that Gildersleeve take the baby home with him, temporarily. Well, temporarily. But, as babies have a way of doing, the little one quickly worked her way into the great man's ample heart. And, like the man who came to dinner, we find her still here for breakfast, seven days later. Boy, am I hungry. Leroy, up and at him. Time to get up. Oh, look, it's still dark. It wouldn't be if you'd come out from under the covers. It's seven o'clock. Well, Papa Robin has another mouth to feed. <laughs> uh, can't wait to see the little tyke. Never saw a baby change so much from day to day. Marjorie, breakfast. Hurry up with the bath. There's a baby. Baby? She's having a morning bath. Oh, it's you, Bertie. <laughs> Didn't think baby had learned to talk overnight. <laughs> have her up a minute, Mr. Gilsey. As soon as I dry her off and oil her up. That's all right, Bertie. Take your time. Uh, by George, there's nothing like having a little baby in the house. Keeps everybody on their toes. Guess I'll sit down and wait for breakfast. Morning, Uncle Mort. Oh, good morning, Marjorie. You're up early. And ironing. Well, I've been up since six o'clock. Why six? The baby slept in my room last night, remember? Oh. Well, she could sleep in mine, Marjorie, but you know how quickly she picks up things. I wouldn't want the baby to learn to snore at six months. <laughs> Oh, I really don't mind, Unky. Uh, of course, I haven't seen the crowd for a week. Well, my dear, when there's a new baby in the house, we all have to make sacrifices. Where's breakfast? She's up bathing the baby. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I can wait. A man doesn't have much self-control if he can't wait 15 minutes for breakfast, I always say. Well, 15 minutes must be about up. <laughs> At least since I came downstairs. I'll just step out and see if Bertie started anything. Good. There's something bubbling on the back of the stove. Smells like oatmeal. Gee, boiled milk bottles. <laughs> At least somebody's going to eat. Well, I may as well set out the eggs for Bertie. Anything to help. Hey, wonder if we have any of those little canned sausages in the pantry. Yeah. Let's see. Strained spinach. Strained string beans. Strained liver. Strained liver? <laughs> Doesn't sound very good with eggs. Might make a little strained liver omelet. No. Hi, Al. What's for breakfast? Oh, well, Leroy, we're waiting to find out. Bertie will be down in a minute. Gosh, wish she'd hurry. She can't expect a little kid to go off to school half-starved, can she? You might try it that way, Leroy. You haven't become a quiz kid on a full stomach. But, Uncle, if I don't eat pretty soon, I might faint. What if I fainted right in class? Right in the middle of arithmetic class? Hey, there's an idea. I forbid you to faint in arithmetic class. You can patiently wait for breakfast like the rest of us. Where is that birdie? You see, Unc, that's all we do around here since that baby came. Wait, wait, wait. Wait for breakfast, wait for the bathroom. Now, my boy. Why doesn't she go home? Leroy, we don't know where her home is, that's why. Until we find her mother, baby's welcome to stay here as long as she likes. Let's remember that. 
And we'll all cooperate. Mm, that's all I do, cooperate. Meanwhile, we'll run downstairs and get some clothespins for baby. You see, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> well, Bertie, I suppose we'll have a little breakfast now, eh? Yes, sir. Sorry you having to wait, Miss Gilsley. Well, I am a little hungry. So is Bertie. I don't know how a 16-pound baby can wear out a 160-pound woman, but I'm bushed. Uh, 160 pounds, Bertie? Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that baby sure is a little darling. You ought to see her in there playing with a toad. Yeah, she's pretty cute, all right, Bertie. I'll, uh, get out the eggs. Hey, here's the iron, Bertie. You've got all that done already, Miss Marjorie? Well, I want to go over to Francie's tonight. I've hardly been out of the house. That's a good idea, my dear. We've all been doing yeoman service since the baby came. Eggs, Bertie. But we must have our recreation, too. That's right, Mr. Gillsleeve. I sure am glad it's my night off. Fine, you deserve it. Now, how about... What? Wait a minute. If you and Marjorie are both going out, who's going to stay with baby tonight? <laughs> oh, Leroy. <laughs> Leroy to stay with the baby. Why can't you stay? Me. The Jolly Boys are getting together. I need recreation, too. Why? What have you done for the baby? Well, I found her, didn't I? Not only that, I've... I've, uh... I've... Marjorie, women know how to take care of babies better than men. All right, Unky. You go to your Jolly Boys meeting. I'll stay home if you're afraid to stay with the baby. Afraid? Who's afraid? I can take care of a baby as well as any woman. Why, thanks, Uncle Mort. What? Uh, she... <laughs> Call me, Uncle? Yes, Leroy. We men are going to stay with the baby tonight. Have a lot of fun. Gosh, Uncle, I can't. The scrub team is holding skull practice. Coach's orders. Skull practice, eh? Yeah, you better go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mort... Why don't you ask Miss Fairchild to come over and help you sit with the baby? That would be nice, Mr. Gilsleeve. Yeah. You two like to sit in the parlor anyway and talk baby talk. <laughs> it so happens, Marjorie, that... It so happens, Leroy, that... It so happens, everybody, that Miss Fairchild is not available. Her flower and garden club meets tonight. Besides, we don't sit in the parlor and talk baby talk. <laughs> Leroy Campbell, I haven't had my breakfast. Bertie, how about those eggs? I have a feeling I was trapped into staying with a baby tonight. Well, if you get trapped, trap somebody else. Oh, good morning, Judge. Hello, Gilda. And how are you this fine morning? My, what's come over you, bouncing in here like one of little Abner's big fat schmooze? <laughs> oh, goat. Just on my way to the office and stopped in to see you, Horace. Mm -hmm. Haven't been seeing enough of you lately. How'd you like to come over to my house tonight? But, Gildy, the fellas are getting together at the Jolly Boys tonight. Jolly Boys? Who wants to go up there? What? Judge, how long has it been since you and I got together for a friendly game of checkers? Well, it has been quite some time. We but... had a lot of fun, old friend. You're pretty good, but I'll bet I could beat you, you old rascal. Oh, no, you couldn't. Oh, yes, I could. Gildy, I've always beaten you, and I could do it tonight if we were playing, which we're not. And remember those delicious midnight snacks? Remember, Horace, that food? Gildy, I hope I haven't given you the impression that I was turning down your invitation. Oh, no. I'd pass up the Jolly Boys any time for some of Bertie's delectable cheese rarebit. Um, uh, Bertie? One of the main reasons I like to come over is Bertie's cooking. <laughs> 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 but I won't be over, Gilday. What? Because I just happen to remember it's Bertie's night out. Oh? Mm? Just because you're stuck at home with a baby, you want to stick your friends. Well, that doesn't include you, Hooker. I wouldn't ask you to come over and help me take care of the baby ever. Now, Gildy, don't take that attitude. Why? Do you want to come over? No. Well, I wouldn't ask you. Goodbye, you hungry old goat. Uh, that hooker. He thinks I'm going to stay alone just because he's going up to the Jolly Boys Club. I'll invite the Jolly Boys over to my house. Hello, 
Hello, Peavy. Hello, oh, hello, Mr. Gellerstein. <laughs> what can I do for you? Peavy, I just got a great idea. You don't care. Yep. Peavy, Peavy, will you stop stacking that chewing gum and listen? Mm, very well. That seems to be one of the reasons I'm here, Mr. Gellerstein, to listen to great ideas. Shoot. Well, how would you like... That's one of the things I had to learn early in life. What? To be a good listener. Oh. Well, how and would you like... one thing you don't learn out of a book at pharmacy school. What's that? To be a good listener. Well, for heaven's sakes, listen then. How would you and the Jolly Boys like to meet over at my house? Well, it might be nice sometime. Uh, what was your great idea? That's it. I'm inviting you fellows over to my house tonight. Oh? Sure. It so happens I'm staying home with a baby anyway. A baby? Yeah. We'll all have a lot of fun, Peavy. Pass the baby around, let everybody hold it a little while. <coughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I... <laughs> Women come in here every day with babies and expect me to cater to them. Yeah, and I've seen you, Peavy. You're great with babies. <laughs> well, infants do seem to kind of take to me. They just look at me and start to laugh. <laughs> and when they start to cry, all I have to do is go, woogie, 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 and they stop. Oh, uh-huh. does that work, Peavy? Well, in severe cases, I sometimes get a toy off the shelf. Sell a few that way, too. <laughs> Great. You'll be a handyman to have around the house, Peavy. I'll expect you date tonight. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Gilbertson, but I'm afraid I can't make it. What's this? I'm afraid I'll have to pass up the Jolly Boys tonight. Peavy, you're just saying that. No, Mrs. Peavy is saying it. <laughs> what? Mrs. Peavy's parrot has the pips. She's been after me to stay home and doctor. Oh, my goodness, a parrot with a pip. Well, I see I can't count on the Jolly Boys. Well, of course, if the pip gets better, I could bring the bird over to your house. Mm-hmm. Don't give it a second thought, Peavy. I'll stay with the baby alone. Goodbye. <laughs> Back to the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You know, Bertie, who's pretty important in the Gildersleeve household, is a great booster for a certain delicious spread you've heard about. And I'll bet there are a lot of reasons she likes it. No, sir, Mr. Wall. I like parquet for one reason, because it tastes so good. Bertie, I can't argue with that. That parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, maybe our friends would like to know why. Parquet, which costs only about half as much as the most costly spreads, is prepared as carefully as a rare luxury food. Only selected products of American farms are used in making it. That's why parquet has such a sweet, light flavor and makes such a delicious topping for waffles, French toast, muffins, biscuits, as well as bread. And parquet nourishes you while pleasing your palate. Every pound's got all kinds of food value, plus 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. It tastes so good, that's why I'm a booster. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. So, friends, ask for parquet tomorrow. As Bertie says, it tastes like it should cost twice as much. Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. you can't say the great Gildersleeve didn't try to get out of staying home alone with the baby tonight. But now that the hour approaches, he faces it as only a great man can. Uh, look at the little cutie smile at me. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Does baby like that? Uncle <laughs> <laughs> Morris, I'm leaving now. Uh, goodbye, Margie. We'll have fun, won't we, baby? Ah. Uh... Yeah, wait. Wait, Marjorie. What? Look, I taught her something. Look. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mort, don't you think you ought to let the baby get to sleep now? I had her all tucked in. Well, I was just tickling one toe back in. There. Come on into the living room now, Uncle Mort. No, sir. If I'm going to be responsible for this child tonight, I'm going to be responsible. I'm sitting right here by the crib. But, Uncle Mort, you'll be all right here in the den. Well, you can leave the door part way open and enjoy yourself in the living room. 
Marjorie, if I wanted to enjoy myself, I'd be at the Jolly Boys. I'm sitting right here taking care of this helpless little baby. Hand me a few of those cigars. Uncle Mort, you can't smoke those awful black things in here. These El Lobos aren't very black. It's just the smoke they make. Come along. She's dozing off. Uh, Let's tiptoe out. Yeah, all right. Shh. There. Good night, Uncle. See you later. Good night, my dear. Have a good time. Thank you, I will. Uh, uh, fine little family. Oh, Leroy! Ah, so Try to be more quiet. What? Try to be... Try to be more quiet. Don't you know there's a baby in the house? Okay. Sorry, Uncle. Good night. Good night, my boy. And don't slam the... door. <laughs> well, if that didn't wake her, nothing will. Might just go into the living room and light up a cigar. blow the smoke out toward the kitchen. I'm off, Mr. Gilfley. I just stacked the dishes, but don't you do anything about them. Don't worry, I won't. <laughs> Have a good time, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Want me to look in on baby before I go? No, thanks. Marjorie and I just did that. Everything's going to be all right. Well, in case it ain't, I got some do's and don'ts here for you. Some won'ts? Well, when you check on baby, be sure the covers are tucked in, but loosely tucked in. I learned that out of a government pamphlet. Oh? And it's right, because the WPA put it out. The WPA. <laughs> oh, yeah. And when she rolls into a different position, you better check to see that she's not sleeping the wrong way on her ears, because if she does, sometimes they curl. Oh, uh, what, what's this, Bertie? But don't you worry about it, Mr. Gilson. You just keep checking. Maybe I better check now. And here's some books to help you. Books? I knew you wouldn't want to worry if anything went wrong. Let's see those. Now, here's one that takes in everything, Mr. Gilson, from infancy to adolescence. Adolescence? How long are you going to be gone, Bertie? <laughs> around by midnight, Mr. Gilsey. Now, don't you worry about a thing. Worry? Oh, no, I won't. That's all you got to do. Just keep checking. Now, don't you worry about a thing. I'll try not to. That's good. Just keep checking. You ain't got nothing to worry about. All right, Bertie. You know what you got to do, Mr. Gilsey? Ah? Uh? That's right. Just keep checking. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, well. A lot of books here. Let's see. What to do till baby come? How did that get in there? <laughs> Here's one that Bertie recommended. Chapter one. Care of the child. Do not prop small babies or hold in sitting position. It tends to make the shoulders round, chest hollow, and stomach big. <laughs> Wish they'd put this book out when I was a baby. <laughs> Uh, let's see what's over here. <laughs> Childhood ailments. Ailments. Every child should have a health examination twice a year. Twice a year? That's every six months. She's at least six months old. Should have had it done today. Uh, better go check. But I'm not going to worry. Well, look at her. Sleeping like a baby. Can't be much wrong. She isn't crying. Maybe she's too sick to cry. Better feel her little forehead. Baby, are you all right? She doesn't answer. Wonder if I should shake her a little. Baby, are you all right? Speak to me. Oh, she's all right, all right. Ooh, now how do I turn her off? Goodness, I'm gonna wear out the carpet this way. Oh, what a pair of lungs. Must be a strong, healthy baby to be able to cry like that. But, baby, be reasonable. I'm trying to make you go to sleep. Oh, maybe I'd better call Peavy. Uh, easy does it, baby. We're calling Mr. Peavy. He'll know what to do. Uh, let's see. How do you dial a telephone while holding a baby in one arm and the receiver in the other? Maybe I can dial with my elbow. Oh, no, the holes aren't big enough. No, baby, don't you dial. Catch your little finger. Uh, having fun, eh? 
Well, maybe I won't have to call Peavy after all. All right, all right, I'll call him. The baby, stop pulling that cord. The phone's slipping. Oh, oh. You scared yourself. A man can't phone this way. Come on, back to the crib, honey. There now, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Oh, brother. Well, come on, it's ringing, Peavy. Answer it. Peavy's residence, Mr. Peavy speaking. I know that. Peavy, you've had a lot of experience with babies. How do you make them stop crying? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, that all depends. What seems to make the baby cry? Well, nothing. I just shook her a little. How's that? I woke her up to see if she was all right, and I can't get her back to sleep. Come over and help me. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm in my nightcap. At nine o'clock? Peavy, I'm here alone. You've got to help me. I appeal to you as a friend. As a jolly boy. As a customer. I'll be right over. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old Peavy. I wonder who that is. Peavy can't move that fast. Adeline. Hello, Throckmorton. I thought you were at your garden club meeting. I just got home and I saw your lights on, so I thought I'd come over. Adeline, come in. I need you. Oh, you do, Throckmorton. Yeah, I can't get the baby back to sleep. Oh, well, where is she? In the den. I've tried everything. Yeah, listen to that. Oh, you precious little darling. Come to Adeline. I'll wrap you up and we'll take you out in the living room. Oh, such a face she's making. Yeah, I tried everything I can think of. I walked the floor, bubbled her over my shoulder. Well, good gracious, it's nothing to worry about. All babies cry. They do? Did you sing to her, Throckmorton? My mama used to sing to me. Sing? Well... Go on, Throckmorton, sing her a lullaby. Lullaby? I don't know many of those. How about Lullaby of Broadway? <laughs> no lullaby, silly. No. How about Little Buckaroo? You know that. Hold, baby, while I get to the piano. <laughs> Hurry, Adeline. Close your sleepy eyes, my little buckaroo. While the light of western skies is shining down on you. Well, that seems to be working. <laughs> Don't you know it's time for bed? Another day is through. So go to sleep, my little buckaroo. Look at life. Don't you realize, my little buckaroo, it was from a little acorn that the oak tree grew. And remember, Uncle Mort was once a kid like you. So go to sleep. My little buckaroo. Gently, Throckmorton. Yeah, there. 
Look at that sweet little smile. Adeline, I don't know what I would have done tonight if you hadn't come over. Been trying to get her to sleep for an hour. Oh, poor itsy bitsy boy. <laughs> Adeline. Yes? I'm glad you dropped in. Well, so am I. We're all alone. Yes? Nobody's looking. Oh, you? Adeline. Zeke. <laughs> Excuse me, Adeline. Doorbell. Who could be calling at this hour? Yes? Oh, good evening, Mr. Jones. Peavy, what are you doing here? I brought a little something to quiet the baby. You just wind it up and put it on the floor. But Peavy... A mechanical duck. Oh, Peavy, stop it. Now, where's the baby? Peavy, the baby's already asleep. Oh, my goodness. You're asleep, my little chuckle. Peavy, catch that duck. You're asleep, my little We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Did you ever take a piping hot piece of toast, add a touch of parquet, and pop it into your mouth? Well, that's when you really get the full parquet flavor. That's when you know that parquet has been prepared like a rare luxury food. Because parquet margarine tastes like a luxury, tastes like it should cost twice as much. It makes a wonderful topping for everything from pancakes to bread. And parquet is nourishing, too, and fortified with vitamin A. For nourishment, economy, and flavor, serve parquet, the margarine that tastes like it should cost twice as much. Ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well... Well? Certainly seems quiet in here now. Certainly does. Yes, it certainly does. <laughs> Peavy, let me thank you once again for coming over this evening. Oh, don't, don't mention it, Mr. Gildersleeve. You sure Mrs. Peavy isn't getting lonesome? This must be a very dull evening for you. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, care for another peppermint, Miss Fairchild? You're very thoughtful, Mr. Peavy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Me too. Good night. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here's a suggestion to every homemaker. It's how to cut the cost of main dishes. Be a smart menu maker. Cook with cheese often. Cheese prices have come down. And cheese is a protein food, a main dish food. Actually, ounce for ounce, there is no other basic food that matches cheese for high quality, complete protein, for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. And Kraft's varieties of pasteurized processed cheese cook perfectly. There's medium mellow Kraft American and sharp old English. Or for rich yet mild cheddar flavor, get Kraft's delicious cheese food, Velveeta. To help balance your food budget, serve thrifty golden cheese main dishes often. <laughs> This is NBC, 